This is Moments with Foo with James Foo Torres, better known as Foo, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet, hear their stories, and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success, and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. Moments with Foo is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Foo. Hello and welcome to Moments with Foo. I'm your host, James Foo Torres, but you can call me Foo, hence the name of the podcast. And today I have somebody that I've been meaning to talk to because I'm a sports fan. He's in the NFL. So I have Reggie Walker with me. He's an ex-NFL star. And I'm going to let him tell you more about his story. But first, Reggie, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Uh, I'm very good. good. Very excited about this. <laughs> you too. So uh, let's just uh, kick it off with a quick intro about yourself. Okay, so, yeah, I guess the bullet points, um, I'm a mental, physical, sexual abuse survivor, uh, survivor advocate. I'm a former NFL athlete of seven years. I was a team captain. I'm a TEDx speaker, entrepreneur, um, best-selling author, and I also created uh, the Game Within the Game course, which is college accredited nationally and regionally, and it's in Forbes Business School um, and some other places and universities. So, yeah, that's basically me. Awesome, awesome. I um, I met I met you because of Jason and because the you were in the in the war room and then I saw it and Jason told me about you and I was like, damn! Like I saw your interview, I was like, oh, I need to get him and I got on the phone with you and then we did this. So I'm very excited about that. And uh, now that's uh, I want to ask you about you know you you have all the you know the story with the NFL. You have a uh, uh the, the the course and he helping with uh helping with culture and leadership team building because you know being a captain in the nfl so many people uh, and for me i think that it's so football i love watching it i don't like playing it because it's such uh it, your success depends on so many people mm -hmm. that it's like i like basketball more because i have more control like i, I can take the ball i can i can make two points right like oh, i can make three points so that's why I know that your skills from a team captain and such, you know, you have 30 people in a, in a, in a NFL team. That's why I translate to this. So my next question is what is taking most of your focus right now? What's taking most of your attention right now and why? So what's taking most of my focus right now is definitely the course, um, getting the course to the different avenues because to help uh, student athletes and students, that's been primarily what we've been up to, talking to colleges, talking to organizations, talking to schools. And uh, because and it's been taking my focus because, you know, I wrote the course. It took me three years to write the dang thing because I wanted to uh, help student athletes understand what they're getting themselves into. Especially, you know, I went to Kansas State. I, I came in with 24 kids, four of us finished. I didn't get drafted by the NFL, but I came in with 14 guys. By my third year, it's me and another guy looking at each other. That's all you see is people fail to attain this dream. And I, and then you see everyone on outside too, you know, they lose that dream that they had when they're in kindergarten. Like I wanted to grow up and be a dinosaur. I want to grow up to be a fireman. That's I want to grow up to be a rock, you know, and they lose that <laughs> because they don't understand that, that, that system that they need for success. So I wanted to teach this. So all my efforts have been going to getting that course into as many avenues to get in front of these kids as possible. Awesome. And, and, and you know, based, based on that, that you, you just said, so, you know, in, in short words, what do you think is, 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 is the main goal of the, like, of this course? Cause you said like, you have like this failure uh, or like this mentality of, of like, damn, like I can't pursue my dream. So is it, is it, you actually can or or how to define your dream like what is it that in short words that that this changes the mindset so you don't feel like a failure oh yeah so the course itself is a mindset and personal development course period and the focus is primarily built on building yourself up to the better you are the the more that you will attain the the easier things will be for you you just have to understand that those building blocks of how to build yourself and why to build yourself this way. And that's what the course basically does. And and it's not centered on any any profession, really. It's more like develop yourself, find yourself, and then commit to whatever is resonates for yourself. Is that correct? Exactly. Yep. Do it too. 
Perfect, perfect. Thank you for that. Because I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting like I've talked to you about this too, but I, I'm trying to make it as clear as possible for people. So that way, if there's people that, oh my god, like I, I resonate with that, I want to talk to him because I have a school or have a connection on a school that this will be perfect for that, or maybe even uh, incorporated on on a on a on a, on a course on, on a on a company or different things. So that's kind of I want to make it very very clear. Oh, so <laughs> thank you. No, no, clear is better. So. But- Perfect. Perfect. So uh, my next question is, uh, do you have any advice or tips for either business owners in general or uh, for those kids or maybe for your younger self if you were to restart? Oh, yeah. I would say even business owners or even myself, I would say one of the biggest lessons you can learn about things is go through the suck. Just do it. It's going to suck. Embrace the suck. That's what we say in the military. Embrace it. Know what it is analyze it, visualize, but just be with it because right on the other side of that suck is everything that you want. You just have to go through it. It might take you an hour, it might take you five minutes, it might take you 10 years, but you have to go through it. And the more that you go through it, the better you're going to be. So yeah, it's, and it's worth it. It's worth it. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can't, I can resonate with that because I mean, coming from the military and I guess that's one of the biggest things that I learned from the military was to embrace the suck. Like it was, look, this is your reality right now. You just got to embrace it. And then you just got to suck. So then you can get good at it. Like, you know, based on this and, and all the, you know, I, I think about this a lot is that skill set of, you know, just doing the best out of the, the current situation was what has helped me to, to overcome all so many challenges in this entrepreneurial journey, because, you know, I got out of the military. I started my agency six months before getting out of the military. And that's kind of how I, I transitioned into this. And for me, like, it's been tough. Like it's, and, and it's like, there's always a challenge and everything. But then like, I talk with people like Jason, Jason tells me all the time, you know, we're also veterans and he's like, Hey man, just, it's a, it's just a season. He tells me a lot. It's just a season. And then uh, like, for example, like July, uh, in, in August, tough months for for agencies i guess it was tough all around because people are on vacation people are doing all these things and now like everybody's back everything their movement this week and that like the, this month has been crazy like it because everybody's like oh like we gotta get ready the heat is gone there's no more summer vibes now we're just doing this thing so that i i resonate a lot with that and that's something that i even said in another podcast we said fail fast and you know because you're gonna have to fail so if you delay the fail you're just delaying the progress too so that's the last thing i want to oh, say 100 percent. that's yeah like you know that's one of the things that david and i david's my business partner i i know we talked about him we we say it all the time you know we're, if things aren't happening we're not failing enough like we're not screwing enough stuff we're not we're not messing it up we're not like like we're sitting here and like we'll, we'll have those times like man it's quiet it's quiet like why are we failing right now? <laughs> like, and like, you gotta, you gotta put something out there and screw it up to know what the right thing is that you need to put out there. But if you're too scared to put something out, you're always going to, you're always going to have that. What if, and you know, at this point, you know, life's too short. I'd rather, I'd rather die trying than die just being okay. Like I'm good. Trying to that. be safe and try to safe. stay like, <laughs> right. safe because that one thing that I, I tell people a lot, life is hard in general mm. so what like you have to pick your heart it's yep. gonna be hard like if you stay in the safe corporate job then you have to adhere to all those rules and all your limitations they it's still hard right oh and then you go entrepreneurship your business oh now you i guarantee like i don't know when my paycheck is coming all these different things but and it's hard right but then you know it's a different type of heart you just gotta pick which one is the heart that you want to pick Oh, oh yeah and then you're going to get those results too because you could yeah i could sit out there and try to get a corporate job and do all the other stuff and not figure out this stuff on my own but you know just like you said you you're embracing what you want i want i want to help millions of people i want to get my message out to billions and to get to that point you have to go through a lot of crap and it is what it is i'm not the first one i try to do that i'm not the last but if I want this, this is what it takes. This is what comes with it. It's the same thing with football. You know, that was a big thing, like embracing the suck. Everything was hard. Like, you, you know, they, you know, that's why that overnight success stuff, like, or like one of the biggest things, like Rick Ross, like you weren't with me when I was shooting in the gym. Like, dude, I, like when I was in middle school, I was running from the, 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 from my house to the playground, which was like a mile. And then I'd run 
15 laps around the the thing and then I'd wake up. I mean, I'd pick myself off the ground and do push-ups to exhaustion and I'd go back home and lift my dad's record craze, anything I could do to get big. Like, and then they were like, man, you just got good all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. like, that's how it works. Like, it sucks. So you got to do a lot of suck to get a lot of good and then you're an overnight success and then everyone was with you and everyone believed in you and all that other crap that isn't true. Like, no, I did a lot of hard stuff. And then I got to this point because I worked my ass off for it and I deserve every piece of it that I get. And I'm okay with that too. Like the humbleness and all that other stuff is cool. But like, if you worked your ass off for something, you better freaking own up to it. Like I did it. And you're not just the bad stuff too. Own up to the good stuff you do too. Own all of it. You got to so, reward yourself. And, and also you got to keep yourself accountable. That's basically, that's basically what you were saying because, and it's true. And, and, and there's a balance, like everything, everything has to have a balance. As long, like I tell myself, like I want to do the best that I can every single day. It's just a daily battle. Like how can I be as efficient as I can be like, today? And then when I go to bed and I and I got out of the shower before going to bed and I look myself in the mirror. And if I, if I feel like without lying, like very honestly, I look at myself in the mirror. It's like you did as, as well as you could today without being too hard on myself, which is the other part, right? Like don't be too hard on yourself. Keep yourself accountable but also cut yourself some slack. You will fail. And that should be in your measurements of success. You should include that you will fail. Right. And that's, and that's part of it. And that, that, you know, that's accountability, but then do as best as you can. So, yeah. <laughs> that's that one line you're constantly walking between like, am I being too, am I being honest with myself or am I just bashing myself? You know, because I do suck at things, but I'm also <laughs> good at things too. Like what that constant balance, like, you know, but that's what we walk through when you're actually working on yourself and you're doing this entrepreneur stuff. But if you're just building yourself, you're, you're always kind of walking that line. Yeah. It, it, and it's tough. Like it's better, easier said than that because we, you know, we do this all the time. Right. And there's probably going to be some, some people in the audience that are trying to get into entrepreneurship and they're, they're not, not doing this all the time. And it might sound easy when we say it, but this is a daily battle. Like every day we have battles and that's what I just kind of want to let that there and, and, and kind of segue now, given that uh, talking about battles and challenges, um, I want to now ask you my next question, which is, do you have, uh, can you think of a challenge that taught you something that you like, damn, like this, I learned such a valuable lesson from overcoming this challenge that you think is worth sharing with the audience? Yeah, I would say dealing with the abuse that I, that happened to that like going to the treatment center the first time, it was one of the most humbling things ever because up until that period of time, I was 27. I did everything on my own. I didn't have, I, I can like, I, you don't have a lot of help. I had to figure all this crap out on my own. I had to figure everything out on my own. Like you don't have any mentorships, like in mentors, people that you can really look up to. It's like, I figured out things by screwing up and picking myself up every time. But rehab, was the first time that I had to literally say help. Me. And it was the scariest thing ever because I was suicidal. I was so depressed and anxious. I could, I couldn't function. Um, it, you know, I, I had some substance abuse thing, but my thing was really, it was depression, anxiety, and I had never dealt with any of my stuff in the way in which you should be dealing with it. I never talked about it. I never just got it out. And at, up until that point, I was basically going nuts because I hadn't dealt with it. Mm -hmm. But sitting there, being there for 30 days and being like, help me, like, help me, please help me. Like in listening to someone else outside of yourself, oh, it, it was life changing because then I realized a big lesson in life. Dude, you need help. Like, you cannot do this all yourself. Like, I'm surprised I lasted that long doing that. <laughs> like. Like even technology took me three. I was late getting on the call because I couldn't figure out how to open up the dang Zoom link with with my phone. And I was just like, thank God I have David. Like if technology, anything like David, help. Like or my kids who are <laughs> like 13, help me. Yeah, they raised on this, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that's but and that's made my life so much easier. If I if I like if I'm hurting or something, I say it. If I'm feeling something, I sit in it. And if I need help with something, I ask for it. Like I closed mouth doesn't get fed in anything. And, you know, That's you awesome. also can't get any help if you're not willing to just open up and say something about it. So 
uh, it changed my whole life. And thank God for that, because if I didn't go, I wouldn't be here. There's no way I would be here. Like I would have been, did something. So like, thank goodness for that. And you know, those great people there and learn that lesson for sure. That's, 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 that's a, a, a good thing to share because a lot of people think that, oh, like rehab, like, I don't want to like, you know, talk about that. Or I don't want to like, I don't, I don't need that. And, and a lot of people that are, that are suffering, but don't want to look for help, like, especially men, you know, men out there. And this is something that, you know, it's getting pushed recently. And, and I, and I really like it. And I keep doing it because as men, uh, and you know, there's you know, not not, not just generalizing, right? Because obviously now the genders and everything. But as men, it's usually culturally and historically, we are seen as 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 the 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 ones that are bringing the money, the ones that are actually doing things. And then we have the the females at home, and 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 they are allowed to be more emotional and all those stuff. Us, we're like the rock, right? Like we're we're supposed to be the one that are like the solid ones that boys don't cry, like all these different things. And I'm glad that that's changing. And, and I'm an advocate for that. So, and I'm, that's, I think that's why we just clicked so quick because we have that. And I've even, I've I even had experienced rehab. I even, you know, done uh, uh, a lot of psychology, psychiatrists, all these different things because, you know, but just growing up the, the, with my family uh, with I have an addictive personality, I, 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 I have ADHD and I have all these different things that, that in living growing in this era like i i grew up and i'm pretty sure like you you're close to my age how old are you uh 35 35 well i'm 29 so i mean it's not too yeah. far right six years we saw this the transition from like there's there's no nobody has phones and nobody has computers to suddenly now everybody has computer every in all that transition it, it with us growing up certain ways and then having ADHD, having all these different things and then coming with this thing that like now that Facebook ads are changing and everything. But before they were just getting all your data and they were like predicting what you need and everything because they have so much data. So all those we're part of this generation. And for me to to at least be be able to to open up. And to have people that hey, it's okay to open up, like it's okay to to seek for help, and that, and I, I guess also because uh, you know we like sports too, we have yeah. like that team, right? And I, coming from uh, the military, loving sports, so I I that helped me too to be able to look for help because I've always have that team mentality, and that's also how I've been growing my company. Because I, I want to run it almost as like, this is a, a sports team. Like we're doing our reps. We're doing our thing. We're going to fail. We're going to take, we're going to learn from it. We're going to do it. Right. And I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the leader, leader of this, keeping everything together. And that's why I can relate to you a lot, you know, as a captain and doing what you do. Uh, and, and, and I, I just want to thank you for, for opening it up and, and selling, saying these things. Cause, uh, it also allows me to kind of. Uh, open up a little bit and bring it in and, and get the people to relate because I know there's going to be a lot of people especially right now like depression anxiety we're all going through it you know we're all going through it we're just fighting and finding people that we can support each other and and, and, and look we, we will survive this like it's just a season right it's just another season then it's going to be another season coming up so mm -hmm. as long as we're together we're going to make it uh we're going to make everything happen okay <laughs> 100% Wow. So this has been such a great conversation. So uh, my next question is, what do you think are either the biggest takeaways of this conversation or what's uh, a big takeaway that you want to leave the audience with before we wrap this up? I, well, hmm, I would say just from the, I would just say something I want the audience to know is, you know, it's, it's, it's great that you brought it up as far as, you know, seeking help. Um, you know, even in business, this is like how you like how you wanted to run it like a team. That's the same thing we had to understand. And the best business owners that you've seen, they run it like a team. I have my roles. You do your thing. You do your thing. We come together. And, you know, that's that's what it is. When it comes down to things, understand that you got your strengths and weaknesses. Own up to it. Own up to all of it. You are good and you're bad. You're amazing at stuff and you suck like shit at stuff, too. <laughs> It's, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. Get with people that are like-minded, that can help you get to where you want to be, and you can help them get to where they want to be and see what magic you can make. Like, open up. It's okay. It's okay. Even men out there who are struggling, 
like you, you said it too, like, dude, going and seeking the help, like it's empowering. And once you get that out, just don't be surprised at who you can be. Like, I, I'm surprised. I never thought I would even talk about like getting molested or getting beat or any of that stuff. I would, that was stuff. I'll take it to the grave. But then once I actually start talking about it, you realize that, man, you start hearing that was the like, freedom, that was right? You let go. It's like that baggage that you were carrying, right? And it's just like, and you, oh, I'm and free. You can connect with other people because, man, abuse that happens like it, it, even with one in six one in six males have been sexually abused from talking to people it's really like one in three it's, it's it way, is. i was shocked like it's like one in three everybody knows somebody and um it, even abuse you can but these bridges you can form these bridges and help each other heal with these communities and that's great so open your mouth don't find someone that you can trust share it up like it's okay like and you'll feel much better for it yeah. And, and look, one thing that I want to share about that that got me thinking was through all my life, um, like I, I even start thinking about it, get goosebumps because uh, throughout my life, I always grew up. I don't know. It's because probably because of my last name, you know, being Fu, like Fu Torres, like it, it was always like a thing like, oh, you're Fu. And my gr my grandpa was like, hey, like this name is it means something. It's big. Like, so I always grew up thinking I was special, like oh, I want to do something special. And then when I when I came into entrepreneurship, this this is a different thing. Like that's just like nothing like I have experienced before, right? Like it, it, me growing up without a dad, and then uh, like my dad is mentally incapacitated, so I didn't have that father figure since I'm in third grade. So and then my grandpa is just like my grandpa; he doesn't want to be my dad. So I have these things. I have my my step and stuff. So I always have like kind of like that missing guidance. So like I I I, I had to develop like okay, how do I look for the father figure? So that's kind of like what allow me to in business find for mentors because it's like, I need like a business dad almost. Like I need a business like that will teach me because I recognize like I, I need to learn so much. Like I came into business and I thought there's like, okay, I always felt special. I always feel that I can do whatever I put my mind to. And then I, I feel like I'm smart. I, I talk to people all the time. So I'm social. I, I, I get conversations with people. So making sales and making a business should be easy for me, especially if, if I can figure out how the fulfillment is going to go. And then I just have to talk to people, get the team together. It sounded easy enough for me when I started. Then when I started, like, there's so many things. And, and, and for me, like, it got to a point that I was like, I, I've been depressed a couple of times and, and some more than others and, and super anxious and I got to a lot of points that I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, I really don't know. I know I need to solve this and I don't know. And and being like Jason, is, it's my my biggest mentor right now. The people, the person that I, I talk the most and he has got me on stock a, a lot of times. It's like, man, like I did this. Like I trusted this person. I pay them. Now they, they didn't do their job. Now I have to, so like, I need to come up with this money or results for the clients. But, you know, like he already agreed to this and all these different things. And then Jason was like, you know what? Everything has a solution. People, I know people that have lost millions of dollars and people that are like screw way worse, like way worse situations than where, where you're at right now. This is just a season. You'll figure it out. Don't worry. I'm not, not I'm not gonna let you fail. And even just having that safety net, even though I try not to like, you know, I, 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 I don't use him to save me, right? It's not, oh, come here, save me. I'm a victim or whatever. No, it's like guide me so yeah. I can figure it out myself. And that's that's a huge thing. So that's why like got this got me thinking. Like sometimes you'd feel like there's no way you can get out of something, like there's no solution. Just talk to people and, and look, there's always a solution. There's always oh a solution. Oh my gosh. It, 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 just because you can't figure out the solution doesn't mean there isn't one. Like that's the biggest thing is you know, I I, I, I view myself very similar to, similarly to you. Like as far as like school, I was I was I was always in advanced classes, I was supposed to skip a grade. Like, I've never had an issue with school. That was never my thing. I've always, you know, that saying, like, you need to be in rooms with people smarter than you. I felt like that was always an issue with me because I always felt like I was the smartest one in the room until I started going into entrepreneur field. And then I was like, oh, my gosh, like, you exist? Like, whoa. Like, uh, like our, our advisor, like Dan Vega and Chase Barfield, like, 
like Dan was telling me a story about, um, you know, just how he does seminars. And I remember looking at him in the face thinking, you're brilliant. Like I could never have done that. Mostly with everyone else. I was just like, dude, I'm hard ass. I could do that. Give me some time. I could do that with him doing that. I was just like, I cannot do that. Mm. I don't know. I, I don't even know how he did. Like what? You talk to the mayor, like they, and then they did what? Like how do you, you know? And and you see those in being around those types of people that really make you feel small in a good way, though. Like I can be like you, but I'm an infant. You're like you're a full blown adult. Like I'm definitely a child. Like lead me, help me. <laughs> like I was saying the same thing to them. Like I don't know this. What's up? Like whatever you tell me to do, I'm doing that. Like you know. And you need that. You need that. And you got to be able to humble yourself like, yeah, I did all this stuff and I'm amazing, but I'm also this too. I'm very deficient in these areas. I don't know this. And then having all these minds come in, especially people who just been there, done that, helping you like let that let their failures be like learn from their mistakes. You don't have to go out there and do it yourself. I did all that for 27 years figuring out all on my own. I'm not doing that no more. Like, no, you said to go left. I'm going left. <laughs> like, I, I don't need to try out. Right. I don't know. I don't need to see it. I don't need to touch it. I'm going left. You like, I, I trust you. I'm doing that. Like I'm good with that stuff. Like, yeah. Cause that's, that's just too hard. Even like the solopreneur stuff, like, I don't, that's I can't, even worse. No, solopreneur is, is that I would never, since I started, I had in mind that I was going to build a team. Like I yeah. never, that's why I make my, my company's called Imperium Authority and not just like full PR or something. Why? Because this is not about food, right? This is not about me. It's about the company and our common vision that we come together. If I'm, if I'm the quarterback, cool, I'm the quarterback, but I still need a defensive line. I still need my wide receivers. Like I need, you know, I, even though like I can be the quarterback, oh my God, like the, the face, right? That everybody talks about. Nobody knows like who are the, in the defense and stuff, but they still like, they they can't do anything if they don't have their team. So that's, right. I always had that in mind, always. Yeah. And then it's also one of those things like, if you're not there, everything's done. Like, why why put that much stress on yourself like it's like it's it's about building generational wealth like having money coming in while you're not physically working like if you physically have to be there for everything like dude what, what once you get sick or what if someone dies or what if you something happens to you like everything is done like you're never quote unquote safe that's like the job thing yeah i'm making <laughs> i knew that from going to the league like as soon as i got out the league i was like dude i'm not making this money anymore like even being in the league, like yeah, you're making that money, but it, I'm hurt. If I can't play in this game, I'm not getting this money. And I had to play out there with like broken bones and stuff like that. Like, man, if I get hit in my neck, I might be paralyzed. Like, I, I don't know what's going on. Like, you don't want to be in that spot. Like, no, you're building something so you don't have to be in that spot. So that's why me and you both are like, wow. yeah, we'll go through all of this crap to never be an ad again <laughs> exactly it's like it, it that's why look every time and this happens all the time like something new comes up like there's always right and i'm like shit like i'm tired of this like i'm in the shower with my girlfriend and i'm like i'm tired of this shit like i'm just tired <laughs> but then i think about the alternative and i tell her all the time when she gets mad at me and stuff it's like what's the alternative though right like like I'm not saying like to pick the lesser bad or anything, but sometimes it kind of is like that. But like it, like but it just think about like if if I don't if I have to work for somebody else, like oh to not have the responsibilities or whatever, then I'm just not gonna have enough money and freedom to actually have the impact that I want to have that's gonna fulfill me in my life. So it's this is the only way. Like I have to, the only way is through. Like I have to just get all the the the, the bad things, you know. Like I'm, I'm I consider myself a, a trailblazer. Yeah. So when you're trailblazing, you get thorns, you get stuff, and then after you clear the path, then you tell the other say, "Hey, come here." And then that's why it's so important if you surround yourself that you can open the path together with other people. So that way, you know, you you have someone that's taking care of you too, and you taking care of them, and you got each other's back. So. Yes. Exactly. And as entrepreneurs, we always have that conversation with our significant other. Like, man, this sucks. I'm <laughs> quitting. I'm over this. Like, I'm over this. I was just talking to my wife, like, yesterday. And I was just like, this is hard, man. Like, oh, like, 
oh, like you just sit there sometimes. I was going to walk and I would just like, just look up at the sky, like just help, <laughs> like it is like just make it a little easier. But at the same time, it's like you know that that wind's coming and it's always this. It's always this, and it's seasons. And then you go a little higher. But just a season, like, like Jason tells me all the time. He it's just, just, it's just a season, and they're just gonna come another season, and it's then another good. season. Like it's just you get over <laughs> this block, and you're like, okay, once I get to this block, everything's gonna be good. And you get over that block, and then here's another thing. And then here's another thing. And you just realize, like, this is what it is. Like, I know that if I go and do the job thing, I'm, it, it is like, you know, job just over broke. You're going to get just, they're going to give you just enough to stay there, but not enough that you, like, be able to, like, go and do your other stuff. Like, it is what it is. Even the league, the NFL is like that in a lot of ways. Yeah. Give you just enough to keep you here but um yeah you know but that's the thing about this is you, when you're a trailblazer you know what it is i'm gonna i'm probably gonna lose an arm lose a leg but like i'm gonna make the path so much easier for someone else and this is the path that i'm choosing for myself like and this is where i want this is my life this is what's gonna bring me fulfillment and i'm gonna fight every day for it and yeah you're gonna go through times you're gonna feel awesome Times you're going to feel like crap. Times you're going to quit. And you guess what? In every single one of those moments, you're going to still keep taking another step forward and forward and forward until you're there. And then once you're there, you're going to do some other stuff. And you can never stop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and the thing, too, is as you get growing, the problems just get bigger. You know, it's because now you have more responsibilities, more people working under you, more like now you're doing bigger deals. You're doing bigger impact. So now what you say is impacting a lot more people. So all those different things, you got to watch out for everything a lot more. Then when you're growing, unfortunately, you know, there's trolls, there's people that just want to go out to get you. And I mean, it's just part of it, too. So it's it's just, you know, embracing that this is not, you know, this is this is not easy. And, and if it was easy, you know, everybody would be into, nobody would work a job and, and embracing to that you have to just daily battles and, and then watch out the things, just keep, just let go, let go, letting go of yeah. things is like a big, big, yeah. just like you said, like earlier, embracing the suck, it sucks. Like, it's not fun. It's not, you like waking up every day and, and, and doing some calls and getting like 15 no's. And like, it doesn't feel good. Like going out there and thinking something's going to work or a deal falling through the last second, it doesn't feel good. But you're here for those times that like, it's going to be worth it though. Like it was, I I'm, I'm learned the lessons from those 15 no's. Now I'm going to go hit these calls and I got 15 yeses because I had to figure out what I was doing wrong with the no's. Like it's a process and you got to embrace that process of suck and but the thing is too you notice along the way is yeah, you can sit here and definitely say from like the first day you started to now like how much better you've gotten just this right. podcast alone you can go watch my first episode and watch this one then when it comes out the growth has been so much because i'm so intentional because i'm going through the reps i yep. just i sucked in the beginning i just jumped in it and i was like i can do this And it was kind of, it sucked a little bit, but I, I like the <laughs> mic, I had to change the settings of them. I still trying to figure out things like, like oh, how to get people, the internet, the, oh, I'm still trying to figure things out, mm -hmm. but then you can see the progress. And that's why for me, it's, it's so good because it's like, it sucks a lot of times, but then when you see your progress and, and, and you see growing as a person, this has allowed me to communicate so much better because now I don't say like too much. I don't, I don't get stuck on the, um, or I get awkward and like, because I'm, I, it's normal now because I keep doing it. And I'm just like, I think about this. I'm like, damn, how, how good would I be when I get to the hundred episode yeah. and, 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 and thinking already, where I'm gonna take this. I want to take this to in person. I want to have people to fly. I want to make this almost a TV show, like all these different things. And I'm here now. And in the beginning, I still kind of suck sometimes, like the internet or whatever. I'll, like someone doesn't have headphones or something, right? But like, right. Oh, it's, it's so many different things, but it's, it's just taking action, committing to something and learning like how to let go a lot. And that's why I said this on another podcast and I kind of want to say it here too, because of you. I think one thing about us, like the in sports, you learn to bounce back from from an L, right? Like, oh, you lost a game, you learn how to bounce back. And I think that's why a lot of people that are into sports, 
do good in entrepreneurship because of that mindset of knowing how to bounce back. That yeah. is like a coming back strong with the team. I think that's why I, I relate this all the time because it's just, there's so many things. I mean, you know better than most about yeah. this. So. <laughs> yeah, no, you understand too. And that's, and that's the thing too, even in sales, that's why athletes make great salesmen too, because you got to hear that no a thousand times. Like, and then I'm, I gotta, I'm just getting through my nose, getting through my nose, getting through my nose. That, that, that mentality is sports does build that, but that, that never say die. I'm going to keep going forward. I'm never going to quit mentality is necessary for life and getting what you want, but especially in entrepreneurship, like you cannot do this without it. Like you're not going to last long. I did no. the solopreneur stuff, failed fast. <laughs> Got David as a business partner. Me and him have failed fast a bunch of times, but like doing it together, we actually got to that spot because having that mentality and doing it as a team, like you, you said with Jason, having somebody that fail along with you, figure it out with you, like go through the pain, the turmoil. It's like as long as you're still going forward, like that's the big thing. And, you know, failing fast, failing off and failing a lot, you know, putting yourself out there, you can't be great unless you're built on a million failures. Every great person is built on a million failures. That's just what it is. So yeah. It's like, yeah. If people were going to listen to that, like fail a lot, keep failing. You're not yeah. I, I love making a, an emphasis on that because it's just, it just like, I want people to every, if, if, if somebody just listens to one episode, <laughs> that's why I'm trying to sneak it in on everyone. Because if you listen to one episode, you want to hear about failing and fail fast, fail hard. And just keep moving. Like, doesn't matter. Just learn from it. Let it go. Keep moving. Learn from it. Keep moving. So um, I know there's going to be a lot of people like everybody that listens to this are going to be like, I need to find this guy on LinkedIn or something because this guy's super cool. So um, <laughs> how is like the easiest way to people find you? So I would say two ways. One, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I, you know, just we, we got connected on LinkedIn, you know. Uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn, Reggie Walker. Also, you can check out um, our website, uh, thegamewithinthegame.com. And you can also check out our other L website, more geared towards um, away from athletes, but more towards corporate wellness at topathletelife.com. And, you know, send us a message. And uh, But, yeah, you can reach out to us that way. Yeah, I'll, I'll put all the links in the description, but I just like people to hear just in case they're listening and they're doing stuff. So, uh, they can they can get in the subconscious and uh, and uh, I just want to say thank you for for taking the time to come here. I I definitely had a great time yeah. uh, and and I know that there's gonna be so much value here and coming in coming this all these words coming from uh, a, a PR agency owner PR is like media super tough. They don't have incentives to deal with me. So if I'm doing it like this and then you come from NFL, you're super open about, about your trauma, about all these different things and how you move forward from it. You open up, you have all this help. So I know that this, this will resonate with the listeners. So thank you for taking the time to, to impact my audience. Oh man. Thanks for bringing me here so I can even get in front of your audience. That means the world to me. And thanks for having on the conversation was great. And you know, I loved it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. And, and I look forward to have more conversations because, you know, I do PR, you try to impact millions or billions. That's what I do. Right. And we talked about this already, but definitely because I would love to have a unified uh, venture with you that, that I can help you position yourself in that authority and visibility. And then you just do you because you're, you know, you're great. Like, I mean, I, you just show it in this podcast. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I uh, appreciate it. Yeah, we definitely have some more conversations around that. Thank you. Like, yeah, and uh, one last thing that I want to leave people with that I, I've been saying a lot. I learned this from uh, Terrence X. Johnson. Uh, he's another person that I've seen as a mentor um, and a, a great connection that I made uh, uh, last year. And he, he told me, and this impacted me a lot, was you don't get what you want, you get what you believe. And that that's something... That it's not like, oh, I want this, I want that, I want that. No, you have to believe that you deserve it. You have to believe that you almost have it already. And, and visualize it. And to be able to believe in something, you have to, to visualize it. And to visualize it, you have to go through the motion of like, okay, what do I need to get here? Okay, so I need to get here. I need to get here. Then talk to here, blah, blah, blah. So when you do those things, it's like, okay, that sounds possible. Now I just have to execute. When you believe that you can actually do it, then that's when you can actually do it. So <laughs> that's when I leave it with that. 100 percent. i agree <laughs> thank you reggie and uh i'm just uh 
going to sign us off now. So this was Fu and Reggie Walker signing off. Thanks for listening to Moments with Fu with your host, Fu. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates and we will see you on the next episode.